welcome. Um, I'm going to kick things off here. Let me switch. Tom knows the drill. You always see me do this, but we're going to just do a quick warm up. Um, as I'm warming up, feel free to follow along. If you have ideas of what you want to see, let me know. I like to think I can draw pretty much pretty much anything, um, at least if we think through it. So I'm going to show you a couple strategies, specifically roughing out a concept and working light until you get it right. So just to begin here, let's draw some straight lines. And I'm just using regular printer paper again. I do feel as though the, oh, hey, Felix. Um, the principles that you learn drawing on paper certainly apply to uh, drawing digitally or working uh, with other media as well. So got my paper here slightly rotated. The reason for that is I want to work at the angle that's most comfortable for me. So that's going to be something like this, right? If if you're if you find yourself uncomfortable, just find the most comfortable spot. That would be my first recommendation. Next thing is I'm using a paper made flare pen. It's kind of my go-to. But as long as you have something that gives you a solid whole line, I think that's going to, uh, at least for this style of sketching, which is industrial design this, or rapid visualization, anyways, industrial design style sketching, um, using a pen like this can be a way to force you to kind of think about what you're doing before you do it. Okay. So if you're just starting out, just put some dots on either side of your paper. The goal is to draw from these dots on the A side to the B side of the paper here. And to do this, I'm just gonna hover over the paper a couple times, one, two, three, and then try and draw and stop on the dot. Obviously I'm not stopping in a dot there because I'm not warm. And we'll do that a couple times. Okay, and the idea being you'd want to fill up a whole page of stuff like this. Um, what I used to do in college anyways is I would sit and I would just watch TV and I would just draw these straight lines to practice. The faster you draw the line, okay, the faster you draw these lines, the cleaner your line is going to appear as well. Um, additionally, you're going to get some expression. So this part of the line will be heavier um, and as you slow down, you're going to get another heavy spot here. Um, not sure if I need to spotlight my video or anything. Y'all can see me, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just wasn't just wasn't sure. Um, okay. I just see Tom's video, so just want to make sure. Okay, so <clears throat> if you if you sketch real quick in the middle, you should have a nice light area um, as you're accelerating, and then as you slow down, heavy and heavy and so forth. And if you if you're comfortable just starting and stopping, you can just draw these on the page like so as well. And just to be clear, I'm drawing with my shoulder, meaning my shoulder and my elbow are the pivots as I'm drawing. Um, let me switch back here. So. My shoulder's rotating, my elbow's rotating, but I'm trying to lock my wrist and not wiggle as I'm drawing. Sometimes I'll use my wrist if I'm drawing something smaller, but for the most part, um, for the most part, I'm drawing with my shoulder. Okay, so next I'm gonna warm up with some circles. Okay, and I, I like to do these about three inches in diameter. It's about 75 millimeters. Just kind of move your hand in that circular motion. I'm, I'm moving my hand over the paper in a way that uh, helps me imagine what I'm going to draw. And then when I'm ready, I can draw that circle and complete. All right. Just like that. And the goal is to get, let's see, this one looks pretty good. Actually, my first one. But the goal is to get a circle where there's very little, if any, overlap at the start and end of the circle. Okay. And that's just going to help with your control as well as uh, precision while drawing. So the third exercise I like to do personally, and there's others you can do as well, but the third one I like to do is just draw a series of parallel lines on the page so and between these lines what i'm going to do now is draw ellipses 
So ellipses are kind of fundamental to uh, a lot of things that people create, that humans create. Okay, and I have this little cylinder 3D printed prototype here. Um, and you can see that if the cylinder is facing the camera, the top is a circle. But as I rotate this uh, relative to the camera lens, okay, the circle now looks like an oval. In addition to looking like an oval, this top circle is a lot skinnier. Right, if I look at the distance from here to here, it's skinnier than this one from here to there, right? Visually, if we flatten this out into two, into two dimensions. So what I'm gonna do effectively is start with an ellipse that's super narrow here. And by the time I get to the bottom of the page, I wanna have pretty much a circle, okay? So all in between here, I wanna create these iterations. So we'll just go ahead and do that. Like so try and get these touching the sides. All right, just like that. And we'll keep doing that between these lines. For me, when I do this uh, exercise, I'm not as concerned about getting a perfect ellipse. I mean, if you really want to, you can, I'm more focused on opening the ellipse as I progress down the page, okay? But if you really wanted to, right, you can focus on making sure that you touch these two lines at the right spot and all of that. All right, we'll just keep going here. And one more set. So even if you're experienced, um, you've been doing this for a long time, I still recommend warming up, doing these practice exercises from time to time, doing the primitives and the basic stuff. All right. <clears throat> so why is this important? Well, with perspective drawing anyways, and this isn't in perspective necessarily, but I did want to show you that if you just add a few lines and a few key spots here, a couple of scribbles, I'm going to skip one, two, three ahead and redraw this ellipse, a couple lines here, super quick, let's go over, I'm going to put a little, little mark through there, and we can just draw a line down, you don't have to draw this by the way. And you can put a little hood line in there, body side, cab. And before you know it, you've been drawing a car this whole time. All right, so don't sleep on your, on your warm-up exercises. Okay, they can be extremely helpful in at least orienting yourself, particularly this one where you're drawing ellipses. Ellipses are, I think, one of the trickiest things to get right and to know um, know how to draw them in the in the correct orientation. All right. Okay. So, as I mentioned, I was hoping that you would think of some product or idea object that you want me to sketch, and I'll talk about two different ways to do it. One is working light till you get it right, and the other is roughing it out. All right. So, any ideas or suggestions? That you'd like to see. Drones or small robots, okay. Characters, maybe. What was that, sorry? Maybe some characters. Uh, oh, like a... I don't know, if you have some... Good oh, like a... Like, like with, uh, with with different shapes of bodies. So. Oh, okay. All right. Um, we could do, okay, headphones for aliens. <laughs> That's a good idea, drones. I usually draw objects more, but we can, we can try and draw some sort of character. Um, oftentimes, when you're coming up with an idea, though, you know, there's a certain set of inputs that you want to consider. You know, if I was thinking about a character, I'd be like, okay, who's this character? What are they doing? Um, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm just going to go 
and start by just drawing some shapes, all right? And I think this is a good opportunity to kind of show you how I might rough something out, especially if I'm not as certain, because this is certainly not my strong suit, drawing a character. But I think we can, I think we can get something here. So um, let's say for this character, we'll just start with some shape. Is there a uh, difference between uh, creating an organic looking creature, for instance, like it's not robotic, but it's more of lifelike rather than creating something like like a something like a like a real product because that's something that i struggle with is when you create organic things it's very different to creating like real life products because there's loads of straight lines whereas organic things are more like curved and shaded and do you have like. a do you have an example of an organic product we got tons of so, suggestions here thank you everyone so like an alien kind of it's okay and draw, sketching an alien is very different to sketching a kitchen blender yeah, absolutely. There's so much more detail, right? Okay. That's what I'm trying to. Yeah. All right. Um, maybe what? Because when I was when I was thinking character, I was thinking more like an animated character. But I think it was Jorge. You had asked about a character. Are you cool if it's an alien, or do you do you care? No, it's fine. I just want to know what. How is your process of sketching? Oh, okay. So just... I would, I would probably start with with shapes, and and maybe this answers Tom's question a bit too. It's like maybe there's an idea in my head. Like I'm thinking, okay, the the head's a little bit wider here. Um, I init I I oftentimes think about the three dimensionality of this, and I know this is just ellipses, but even just roughing something out this way um, is a good starting point. Draw Baymax if you're drawing a character. <laughs> that would be an easy one to draw. Um, so if I have something like this roughed out, then I might I might want to mark say. Okay, maybe I know I'm going to put a nose there, for example. Um, maybe I want this character, since it's an alien, to have some eyes off to the side. And I don't know. If, I think maybe it has some sort of tendrils or is that the correct word? Tendril off the side here. I'm kind of digging this. So I have like my main shape and I'm just putting things on the paper again it sketches a conversation i'm having a conversation with myself and with you guys like oh what if it looks like this what if it looks like that what if what if it has nostrils that are up here or something or maybe it doesn't have nostrils we'll see we'll see all right so once i have the main form now i'm thinking okay there's probably some sort of eyelid right that's going to cover this up right there super rough <clears throat> maybe it has hairs i don't know just just thinking out loud here nostril and i'm going to throw some wrinkles in these aren't the final wrinkles or anything but i'm going to have that in there and as far as the mouth goes maybe something like this we've got our lip like so maybe an iris Right there and if we had a neck right the uh if this thing has volume there's a neck coming off maybe it's coming off here into whatever alien suit it's wearing or whatever all right so i might do something like that um so this method is called or i like to refer to it as when in doubt rough it out right so i wasn't sure what we were doing just sketched a few shapes to start with. The other way I like to do it, Tom, um, I'm pretty sure you've seen me do this. Like you can kind of just scribble something, right? And then say, and then start to make shapes out of that thing. So I have the general shape that I've already decided on. And now we can use these scribbles to then continue to refine as we go. All right, so it's a process of iteration, but again, this is just another example of a rough sketch that you could do. So if I were actually overlaying this, I can take, if your paper is thin enough, right? So you can use tracing paper, marking paper. I'm just using printer paper here. Um, if your paper is thin enough, then you can, and I'm going to use a brush pen so I can be a little bit more expressive here. Uh, where did I put you? All right, 
So I'm just going to use this brush pen. <clears throat> and so now, and you can kind of see it through here. All right, so now I'm going to just be a little bit more organic with my stroke, less less quick and more illustrative. I don't I don't have a good adjective for that, but the nice thing about the brush pen is I can get some variation in my lines. Right, and even these these lines on the nose, starting and stopping. There's different types of lines that you can use when drawing. Um, these are called implied or gesture lines. Okay, but we can use these lines as we go to then create some some texture here. And I didn't figure out everything with my my character in terms of like where the tendrils come out or anything, but now I can be a little bit more sketchy. So I have the structure, I have the framework, and I think I'm gonna keep those those hairs on the top. This is really reminds me of something from Men in Black, the movie. So yeah, never never drawn this alien, never drawn an alien like it. But again, you can kind of think about the the shapes. Start there, rough it out, and then when you're in a good spot, start to uh, add those details. Right. texture lines here and let's get these little tendril spots in and I'm not tracing so much as I am just using that bottom or underlay sketch as a guide to say here's roughly where I want things to be Are we on time? We got time. So we got three on this side. All right. Okay, and this is quick, no color, anything like that. If I wanted to add a color, that's a whole different uh, proposition. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that today. At least with this this guy. All right. So, Tom, does that answer your question a little bit? Like, a couple strategies for uh, yeah, because it's you know certainly not a straight line thing, but you can see how I've changed my approach a little bit. Um, since it is organic, just a little bit, I'm, I'm intentionally adding, um, like multiple strokes or, uh, being a little bit more hesitant with, with how I'm doing things. I don't have a better, I think, better I think the difference that I've figured out is, is it's different from having construction lines on when you're sketching something. It's more of like a really rough kind of thing. Yes, exactly. Like I'm not, um, you know, sketching some some box around this yeah because when you when i'm doing a product sometimes and there's the underlay right there's the underlay overlay so um super fast just getting the general shape uh and then the overlay a little bit sore so what i'm trying to say is normally when sketching like if this were a robot for example someone asked about about a robot i know i know he asked about a small robot but I would probably start by using my brush pen still. <clears throat> start by thinking about, okay, what is the, this is more of a, a Scott Robertson thing, right? But what is the overall shape here? If I were to 
kind of draw this in, in 3D. What does this look like? Maybe there are straight lines that I'm using here. And then I would draw my ellipses, maybe a curve, another ellipse, so forth, and start to start to shape this out. Okay. So a little bit little bit different approach, but you could use you could still use this as an underlay for something more organic as well, if you wanted to. All right. Let's see, we got Okay, drones, I think, was the next one, or small robot. So in this case, what it, the, the question I like to ask myself is, what does it kind of look like? Or what does a drone kind of look like? Um, basically, rect rectangle like so. I'm thinking of just a simple propeller drone, but rectangle, it's got uh, four propellers, typically, quadcopter drone, right? So some main rectangular body and these these uh, propellers, okay? That's what I'm thinking of. So using that same technique again, when in doubt, rough it out. All right, we can start with rectangle, like so. Give it some depth in 3D. This is in perspective, meaning these, these lines appear to converge at a certain point. These lines appear to converge at another point. If we were to extend these out, right? And we've got our quad rotors, so one, two, this one would be about here, three, and four. So I'm gonna redo this because I drew it too big for this page, or I just need to have bigger paper. <clears throat> so let's try that one more time. It's a little bit too big. All right, so rectangular body. Um, it's going to kick up a little bit. It's going to kick up and off to the side. This is coming towards us, so it's a little bit weird to imagine and where the, where this would be. So, um, and then this one's going off like so. So we have one, two, three, and four, something like that. And so what I can do now is start to think about, okay, well, what's the shape of this thing? Maybe it has a little, little hump here. Um, we can just rough that out, right? The, the reason I'm showing you this method, by the way, and, and just scratching it in like this is so that you realize like you don't have to sketch perfectly if you think strategically about what you're doing. So I'm just trying to get the pieces in place, reasonable perspective in place, and then we can use a similar trick to what we did for our character and create a little bit of an overlay. And this is one perspective or point of view. Certainly, if you wanted to draw your drone coming towards you, you could do that as well. All right, so now, now it's facing us, and then we could have your rotors out this way. It's also one way you could do it. So point of view, perspective, how you imagine things to look also factors into how you draw the thing, right? And even sometimes how complicated it's going to be to draw the thing. So something to think about. So now that I have that in place, we'll go ahead and create another overlay here. Again, super fast is the goal because I'm thinking of uh, high volume output but low effort. I don't want to sit there, um, you know, drawing for a long time, figuring out this drone thing. Uh, where's my pins? And because I'm working so rough and I'm not worried about getting it perfect up front, it means that I can, I can kind of relax and not worry as much. All right, but as as we then create our final sketch, that's when I can add my design details. Like maybe these arms are a little bit, or there's a little little kink in the arm here or something. Again, this is where it gets a little bit weird with the perspective. Probably wouldn't see much of that one, and then up like so just sketching really lightly here 
now I can start using my under sketch like so. And as you go, you can you can start to kind of chop up your design. I don't have a good way, maybe divide your design into any functional bits or elements, right? Decide how how these arms are attached to your drone. Hopefully your ellipse warm-up helps you here. Maybe throw a couple lines in for movement. I'm not being super careful with the direction of these lines, by the way. So hopefully I'm doing the right thing here. All right. So if this were like an actual project, this is probably the second of three sketches I would do. The third would be more of a final, like, okay, here's the actual design. And that's where I take a little bit more time, be a little bit more careful, probably even pull this in. This is a little bit, a little bit off. Um, in terms of distance. And to further show some three-dimensionality here, I like to always throw a little bit of marker and not much, just enough to suggest some shadows, for example on the bottom of this drone, maybe on the side here, or if there's a material break of some sort. Just kind of helps clean things up. And assuming this is a drone that uh, has a camera, maybe we can throw that on the front. Throw a little shading in here. And we're getting there. All right. So again, with, with the sketches, I just want them to be quick, capture the idea, and communicate what I want. If, if I were going to be showing this to, say, an executive or someone who isn't necessarily um, able to see my design intent without you know, scrutinizing the, the fidelity of the sketch, then I would take a little bit more time, do another overlay, overlay and finish it up a little bit better. But I'm trying to get to as many of these uh, suggestions as you guys have. Okay, we've got uh, headphones. All right, could do some quick headphones here. So for the headphones, I'm going to use a different technique. <clears throat> this is called light until you get it right. Works really well with something like a ballpoint pen here. So the idea is with a ballpoint pen, I can vary the pressure I put on the pen. So that's really light. I can go heavy, heavier, and even heavier, right? You get a nice variation here. So when working light till I get it right, what I want to do is start with the structure of the headphones. So I've got two offset ellipses. All right, this is going to come down like so, a little bit straighter, like so. And now I can sketch. I guess I did do headphones on my YouTube show uh, last week. So kind of fresh in my head here, but um, now I'd sketch two rectangles. So this one's going to be pointing up like so. And then this one's going to be pointing up like so. And we're going to see the inside of this can, but the outside of the other can. So it's a little bit confusing, but um, stick with me here. So probably something like this. 
depending on how close these are. And then for the band here, I'm actually going to shift this one just a little bit. And assuming you have some design intent in mind, this will be a lot easier, but I didn't have any specific design in mind. So I'm just kind of riffing as I go, again, having a conversation on the paper. So these lines are just construction lines. And if you do them lightly enough, you can just kind of leave them as a part of your sketch. And like I said, sometimes I'll use my wrist if I'm sketching something small enough or if it's an area, uh, area that's fairly contained, then I'll, I'll use my, my wrist to, to do that drawing or that little detail. I have a question about the, the headphone, like the rectangles. Uh -huh. As I'm reading about perspective, I remember that being like auxiliary um, vanishing points. So like you have yep. the main vanishing point and then it's like you, you go straight so, up. How do you like determine that? Um, how do I calculate like, it? Without, yeah, like without your horizon line, like what's your, I mean, I'm sure drawing it a million times makes it so it's like embedded in your yeah. brain. But like, <laughs> like a, a hack? Um, that's a great question. Um, and actually not something I've thought about because like you said, it's, it's something that just kind of comes naturally now, but I did draw these two arrows for you because at some point way off the page, these two lines would taper to a vanishing point, right? Because, because of the angle here, it's facing down. Same mm -hmm. thing with the backside here, right? It's going to taper down. So it's your, your auxiliary vanishing point is either going to be above or below the horizon line, above or below the left or right vanishing point. So in, in the case of like a house, right, the house is a good, good example to look at. So some little box like this. And if I have, well, let's exaggerate the perspective a bit more. So it's a little box and I want to draw a roof on this house like so. Right. I know these two lines are going to converge going up just from experience. But if I were to extend the horizon line out to where, oh, there's a, there's a vanishing point and then extend up, right? This, these lines should meet above the right vanishing point. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's just a matter of like, the more observational drawing you do, the more practice you get, um, the more you can kind of guesstimate would be the best way to say it. So it's just a matter of like habit because I've done this enough. Um, I know that there's, these are going to taper down, this is going to taper down as well um, to that third, to that uh, auxiliary vanishing point below the, the headphones. Okay, cool. But it, it is just a process of like, leaning on experience and kind of what, and it's maybe this sounds weird, but like what feels right. <laughs> um, I do believe that oftentimes with sketches, you can kind of just tell what's wrong because something feels off. It's just a matter of recognizing what that thing is. Yeah, definitely. Like when I draw something uh, and then, cause like oftentimes in reality, things aren't exactly perfectly on a, perspective like access so it's like, exactly it isn't perfect and yeah it's like i don't know okay well definitely so just do more so what i'm trying to do here now is take these lighter lines that i sketched and now pull out the detail that i want um <laughs> it's funny because i was like yeah you can sometimes tell what's wrong with the sketch something's wrong here that i would have to fix um, probably in an overlay or something, but it's just a little too peaky there, right? So um, sometimes you can just kind of tell. In any case, when you work light, it just means that now that I'm a bit more comfortable with the design or certain, I can say, okay, this is actually the line I want for the headphone, right? Maybe like so. You can also add shading, um, and this this is related somewhat to Tom's earlier question about softer things. But if the cans are soft, then I would change the way I'm drawing those lines as well. 
just ever so slightly. Add a little bit of a curve in there. And just a little line like so. And offset another line like so. And that's going to give me a nice little cushion shape. You can shade in here. Just a series of parallel strokes. And then I didn't really design the outside of the can, so I'm just going to make something up here on this one as we go. All right, so if you if you like to work light, you can do this with a ballpoint pen. You can also do it with a marker. So the next example I'll show you, I'll use a gray marker um, to show how you can work light. You can also do this with a pencil. Work light till you get it right. How do you? Uh, oh, go on. Sorry, no, go ahead, man. I just went. No, I was just going to ask him a question. I was going to say, have you used the headset much to design stuff like this, or have you not really done much? No, I'm just, I'm still learning. <laughs> Someone else had a question though. Or maybe not. All right, let's finish this cushion. All right, so maybe something like that. I don't know exactly what's happening on the inside here, so I'm just kind of making it up as I go. Maybe we'll just shade that in. All right, so think about what it looks like, work light until you get it right. If you need to do another overlay, you can do another overlay and then continue to refine or find your drawing as you go. The same thing would apply for something like AirPods. Someone asked about that. How do you draw an AirPod? I would start with some sort of elliptical shape like that, and then a cylindrical shape. I'm trying to go, go from memory, so if this doesn't look like the AirPod, please forgive me. Um, I guess this is slightly angled, something like this. And then, this is like cut off. So now that I have that structure, we can just throw in some darker lines here. Like so. And I think this blends in if I remember correctly. Something like that. There's a little bit of a chrome piece on the bottom, so I'll just show that with, with some lines here. And then we've got one of the reasons I don't like using ballpoint too is I get these little spots from time to time. Kind of mess up your drawing. Have you ever considered, I know uh, you have some digital uh, stencils and stuff and pencils and like markers and stuff, but have you ever considered creating real life, uh, the real life stencil or the real life <laughs> ballpoint pen? Oh, you know, I, I haven't. Um, that's an interesting, interesting thought. Maybe I'll talk with you offline about that. But that is, that is an interesting thought. Yeah, I don't remember exactly what these look like. Um, in fact, I think this is a little bit off, right, perspective-wise. So this is where I'd probably do another overlay just to get this right. Throw a highlight in, maybe a shadow. And it was totally fine to overlay. You'd be surprised, I, at least I was surprised at how many of uh, these people that I really looked up, looked, well, look up to use, um, under underlays, totally fine. I guess when I was in school, I just thought 
everyone just was just like good and didn't need any of that stuff. But again, figure out ways to work quickly and work smart instead of like making life hard for yourself, whether that's rotating your page or creating a creating an underlay for your sketch, whatever the case may be. Yeah, it looks a bit better. You can also just use contour lines instead of shading if you want to show the general geometry of what you're drawing. Go ahead and add a little bit of a shadow here. I'm trying to get to as many of your suggestions as we can before time runs out. Which is why I'm being very loose with these. All right, so probably something like that. So again, think of what are the elements or what's the closest shape to this thing I'm trying to draw. Draw that and then modify as you go. And you'll be able to, to move pretty quickly. And don't be afraid to uh, underlay or whatever. All right. Okay, we got did headphones Mandalorian ship. That one might take a bit bit of time. Um, Sharon, I'm not sure if you're still here, but I will do uh, the blender real quick. And for this one, I'll use the gray marker to show you an alternative. So if you like to use markers, this is one way you can do it. <clears throat> All right, so I'm thinking about blender, general shape, super rough, something like that, some sort of hourglass shape. It's gonna have a lid, it's gonna have a handle, or an inside, it's gonna have blades. At least mine kind of looks like that, and some sort of control area. So if I'm doing this in perspective, start with the top. Some shape like this, okay, and we can draw down like so. Let's get our top portion here. We've got the top, and again, I'm using just simple straight lines here just to make this easy on myself. I don't need to make it too complicated. I'm gonna have a spout on my blender as well. All right, something like that. And let's draw through maybe some sort of offset ellipse or circle in here. And then for the positioning of the blades, what I like to do anyways is have another ellipse here and then just mark some ticks. So if it's two blades, one there, one there, and then we can kind of angle up. Or maybe it's four blades, whatever the case may be. Okay, you can kind of figure it out by just roughing in that geometry. And then let's do our base. Something like that. If the spout's there, the handle's going to be off the back. So I'm just going to draw through with that gray marker. Like so. In a rough in that position. All right, cool. Yes, this actually needs a little, little thickness there. And then I think I said some sort of control panel on the front like that, super quick. So now <clears throat> working on the same page, we can just take a pen right, and just be a little, little bit more careful here. And just draw these these lines in. Just like that. Yeah, 
and I'm going to make a slight tweak here. And the other, the other thing about drawing faster too is there's less time for you to make a mistake if you draw faster as you're drawing these lines. Because this is transparent or translucent, I like to put double lines on things that have thickness that are transparent or translucent. So these corners or edges, just doubling up that line will communicate a little bit of thickness. Now we can just finish off with the top handle and the blades. And maybe a couple measurement lines. So I hope you can see this process is, it's very similar to the other of just roughing things in. Um, slightly different in that I'm not actually creating, I'm not like getting another piece of paper to do an overlay, but rather just relying on contrast. Okay. Contrast meaning because these lines are a bit heavier, okay, they show up, um, or that's what your eye pays attention to, rather. Got our cable there, and now let's finish off our handle. All right, just like that. You can add color to it if you wanted to. Um, you could also uh, enhance the line weight a little bit in certain spots. So right where it's resting on the surface, just bump that line weight a little bit. The Doug Chang method. Yeah, it's uh, Doug Chang, awesome illustrator. Did a lot of the Star Wars. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure he's still working with uh, Lucasfilm too on like all the Disney Plus shows. So really, really talented dude. Anyhow, so that's how I'd kind of think through it. Um, if I were to critique, critique it myself, I need to spend more time on the blades, but we're just blowing through here. All right. I think we got time for one more. I think I might be over time actually, but I'll do one more real quick. Uh, gaming chair. All right. Gaming chair. That shouldn't be too bad, actually. <clears throat> I'm trying to think how I want to, how I want to do this one. We'll just go for straight pen. All right, so straight pen, come in and do something like this. I know I'm gonna run out of space though because I don't have space for space for wheels or anything. We're just gonna we're just gonna work with this though. Alright, so maybe something like this. And let's do some gamer lines in our seat cushion. 
Give this some thickness. I guess I don't have armrest. Do you need armrest on a gamer chair? You probably do. Probably do. And I want this to go back. Let's connect the seat to the back. And now just bump line weight where we need to. Clean things up as we go. Then I'll do the, the base with the wheels. Five more minutes, all right. <clears throat> yep, with traditional sketching, there's no no undo button, that's for sure. I feel like if I if I sketch digitally for too long, then I, I develop these bad habits, um, which is why I like to, um, or one of the reasons I should say, why I like to maintain that skill. But it certainly does have its advantages, um, particularly where you might want to scale something up or showing variations or versioning of certain designs. Um, let's see. I'm just thinking through the shape real quick. Okay, a little curve there. Curve there. All right. So now the seat or the, the wheel portion. I'm going to draw an ellipse. Then just connect to this ellipse in a five star pattern or five point. Let's give this some thickness. And there's probably probably some sort of lever here adjustment I'm sure and now we can just throw in some wheels I'm not always the most careful with wheels when I do these chairs but just enough to hint at hint at the wheel because I'm being lazy but at the same time even though I'm being lazy with these wheels I'm trying to draw these ellipses in a way that suggests their relative position in perspective, you can do multiple pers oh, wait, so go this way. You can do multiple perspectives um, in the same drawing, so or not multiple perspectives, multiple vanishing points. So that's why I'm drawing those uh, that way. All right, so something like that. All right, super fast gaming chair. Just wanted to get to as many of these as possible. Hey All right, everyone. looks like Daniela is booting the sessions, me. <laughs> uh, the workshop sessions today. Reminder, we have one minute left uh, one minute. for the next uh, DJ set to start. So just to wrap it up, thank you so much for everyone that has been giving out the, the, the workshops. Okay, thanks everyone. Um, hopefully that helps a little bit. So remember, when in doubt, rough it out. Work light till you get it right. Uh, use materials, tricks to help you um, sketch quicker, right? Think of what does the thing look like? What's the closest shape? Um, maybe I need to do some layering with, with those papers, and then you can uh, sketch what you want. All right, take care.